setting up first heart transplant clinic, or rather a hospital in Multan. So it's a fantastic achievement, project worth millions of pounds, and I'm proud to have him on the stage. Dr. Shazad Amin is another GP. Uh, Dr. Bilal, you already heard. I don't need to explain, uh, you know, how motivated these people are. We have a nurse in our uh, team. We also have an IT person who is helping us design the software. What we are really talking about here is an introduction to the mobile health clinic. This is a project which we have taken on board to help the rural community in Pakistan. I wrote a paper which was sent to the government of Pakistan about five years ago and that was, this project was actually presented in there. And as, as you can appreciate, there wasn't much progress, but obviously we are not going to give up. Uh, so we are here, we have started this project uh, on our own. Can I have my first slide please, if you can come Please buy, please buy, please buy. As you can appreciate, the doctors who are working in Pakistan, obviously they want to work in the best place rather than going in a remote rural area. And our aim is to provide that doctor a fantastic atmosphere so the doctor can actually go in a mobile clinic in a rural area and treat the patients and then he's brought back to the, to the clinic where he was. Uh, so this is the basic theme. Just to give you a bit of uh, background in terms of, first of all, what we really want to do is uh, just try to understand the need, how big is the need. Okay? We, we are talking about a family clinic, a primary health project. Is it worth the investment? Okay? And next slide, please. As you would appreciate, within UK, as, as you can see, 90% of consultations are done in GP surgeries, only 10% in hospitals. So if you have a strong family system, family care, family clinics, that would mean the burden on the secondary care is much reduced. And that, that's, that's really the aim. And on the other side, even NHS is struggling for money. Government has actually pledged 50 billion more pounds towards primary care in 2020. So this is something which we are obviously uh, keeping an eye on. And that just tells us how important British government is in terms of looking after the primary care. When we look at the data from Pakistan, I mean, as you can see on the screen, the, people, the number of people who die from simple infections, simple diarrhea, 900 children die a day. These are not 900 animals. 900 children, this is a WHO data, and obviously this is not accurate. We think that figures might be even more. Maternal mortality in rural areas is around 25. One in four ladies in a rural area die from a simple pregnancy, which we can easily say. So what we are really planning to do is uh, just, just think in terms of how treatment work, how patients react when they have a problem. You know, just think of a simple young man with a chest pain sitting in a rural village, what will happen to him? There is no ambulance, there is no doctor. Majority of doctors who are there, they work in the city's main hospitals, but it's the rural community which actually suffer. And 70% of our population actually live in the rural areas. So that just tells us how big is the problem. And obviously we cannot look after the whole country. As an organization, we can only look after that much. And that's what we are trying to do. The aim of the project is to have a mobile clinic which will go from village to village, two villages in a day. And in a week it will cover 12 villages. Obviously we take Friday off. And this project is actually up and running at the moment. So we have the doctor, we have the helper who goes with him, who is a driver as well as a dispenser. The mobile clinic has all necessary medications. And all the medication is free for people who cannot afford. So we never ask them any question. Rather, we have a small box. We ask them, if you are affording, just put some money in the box. We don't ask you for any money. We haven't done it so far. And during last 
four weeks, we have seen 2,000 patients. One clinic has seen 2,000 patients. So it's a huge number of patients which we are actually helping. Can, can I just have your attention in the screens, please? These two pictures. This, this is not a rural area. The top picture is Lahore railway station. And this is how a patient is transported from his home or her home to, to a hospital. The second picture is obviously, uh, as you can imagine, this is the type of service which we have. The, obviously, the mobile health clinic is going to run in four phases. In the first phase, we are just providing daytime service, which is up and running at the moment. In the second phase, which we are planning to start in about two months time, this ambulance is going to work as a patient transporter. There will be no doctor, but in our cluster of villages, about 50,000 population, when somebody has an emergency, an obstructive labor, a chest pain, any emergency, they will call us and the driver will go and transport that patient during night time. In the third phase, we are bringing in a nurse in this, which is going to work as a lady health visitor. And that will be the champion for female health. Obviously, we do understand there is a cultural barrier and we want to bring in that nurse. And that nurse is going to be trained by our nurse who is in the UK. And we have a link with Skype. We also provide backup service. If there is any complex case there, the doctor has access to us. We actually provide him a call back within 15 minutes. We advise them. We have so many specialists, we refer cases, so it's just like we are working in the background, providing support to the doctor, uh, which is over there. In the third and in the fourth phase, we want to bring in electronic medical records. As you can appreciate, electronic medical records are very important. At the moment, if a patient goes to a doctor, has a test done, for example, CT scan, which will cost few thousand pounds, he's not happy with the treatment, he will go to the next doctor, the doctor will start investigations again. So if we have that simple system in place where the doctor has access to the previous report, it will save money for the patients. And what we are really trying to do is simplify things. We will have access to that data, we will be able to provide them guidance, we will be able to allocate resources. If we know there are more patients of diabetes, hypertension, we can actually bring up all those specialities and tell them make the need of that particular village. So essentially, we obviously there is so much we can talk. But what we really want to do is uh, focus. I know my mentor has given me the indication I have, I'm out of my time. I'll just show you my last slide and for you to just think about it. Please can I have a bit of silence, a little bit concentration on my last slide. I'm going to leave in 30 seconds. Just imagine on the person in this picture. Just imagine, please for this, for God's sake, just look at this picture. This picture brought tears in my eyes. This poor gentleman, which you can see on the screen, is dragging the bed of his wife in a desperate attempt to take her to hospital to save her life. How desperate can you be to drag the bed? These are the people which we are working for and we need your support. Thank you. Thank you very much. A big round of applause there, please.